is Civil War Talk Radio. I'm Jerry Prokopovich. Civil War Talk Radio would not exist if there were not many people, myself included, who are fascinated by the Civil War. Unfortunately, it's all too easy for those of us who have been bitten by the Civil War bug to let the war become a form of entertainment for us at times, forgetting its human costs. To challenge that, we have on today's show as our guest, Harry S. Stout, Professor of American Religious History at Yale University and the author of Upon the Altar of the Nation, A Moral History of the Civil War, an important book that challenges everyone listening today. We'll be back in a moment with Professor Stout on Civil War Talk Radio. Got tons of Sky High Airlines miles? Tired of flying Sky High? Well, happy day! Sky High's partnered with Noah's Livestock Transport to send you quackin'. Share a bed of straw with creatures great and small to Fanny Stale in Rose North, Manitoba. Solix extra passengers must have all shots. Sky High Airlines, our miles move you! Remember when you laughed during a business conference? You felt more energized, more alert, and more receptive to the message being delivered. Hi, I'm Russ Dolnack, and I make people laugh. And as a professional humorous speaker, I open up a morning conference session with a laugh or close off the day with a funny recap. It's it's just a -a one-of-a-kind experience. Visit RussIsFunny.com right now. Get an audience into it. You know, if they're laughing, it's paying big dividends. They're more relaxed, they're more creative, and if nothing else, a humorous speaker leaves each and every one of them with a smile on their face. You need comedy. Custom, clean, clever comedy. Otherwise, your audience might just doze off. <laughs> just imagine, if you had to listen to hours of serious commentary without a break, come on, pack some upbeat energy into your next event. Humor works. Find me, Russ Dalnack, at russisfunny.com because, well, Russ's chubby.com was taken. World Talk Radio, bringing the world to you. To reach a show host or guest during the live show, dial toll-free in North America, 866-613-1612. Or, if outside the USA and Canada, dial 001-858-268-3068. Welcome to Civil War Talk Radio. I'm Jerry Prokopovich, bringing the show to you today from the home office of Civil War Talk Radio in Greenville, North Carolina, just off the campus of East Carolina University. And even though I'm not using their telephone today, I should still tell you that this show represents my views, those views of the guests, not those of East Carolina University or anyone who works for them, and particularly none of the other members of the history department with whom I frequently disagree. Also, uh, disclaimer and apologize in advance for the audio quality if the allergy that bothered me last week is still with me. I will try not to cough through the show, certainly not over our guests' important points, and apologize in advance for that or for dogs barking, phones ringing, or other hazards of broadcasting from the home office. Well, today we're going to talk uh, with a, a guest, a, a new guest uh, on the show, Dr. Harry S. Stout, Yale University Professor of American Religious History, who has written a book called Upon the Altar of the Nation, A Moral History of the Civil War. Dr. Stout, are you with us today? Uh, yes, I am. Can you hear me? Uh, I can hear you. A little bit distant, but uh, but keep shouting. We should be okay. All right. Um, thanks uh, for... I suffered my share of allergies as well, so I sympathize. It, it's that time of the year. It's the spring. Many people listen to the show archived it could be uh we can imagine people listening to it months from now it's cold and rainy outside <laughs> uh but right now it's the air is full of pollen and it's warm down here in north carolina i hope uh, you're up in connecticut right now that's correct and i hope it's nice there too beautiful good well let me ask you what got you uh interested in writing about the american civil war let me start even further back uh, your day job is as a professor of american religious history that's correct uh, and I teach both uh, undergraduates and graduates um, uh, a variety of subjects. Uh, primarily, though, in the colonial period in the 19th century, I, I began my scholarly career writing about uh, Puritans and the American Revolution. Uh, and then I moved to an interest in the, the Civil War. I had taught it for many years, 
And uh, like all of our textbooks, like um, anyone who's ever lectured in American history, the Civil War always emerged as kind of the B.C. and A.D. of American history, the axis on which uh, the, the nation uh, rests. And I, I wanted to make my next big project uh, the Civil War, but uh, a project that would play to my special strengths. Well, that makes uh, which sense. are most emphatically not as a military historian or uh, as a Civil War buff, uh, whose whose primary interest is in the battles. Uh, my interest was in uh, something else uh, that would work somewhere at the intersections of uh, religion and ethics uh, in the Civil War. And and I think that's a really important topic. I'm the your your background in, in uh, Puritan uh, history. I, I personally find fascinating. I was driving home last night. I gave a talk at a Civil War roundtable and listening to the radio on the way home, nothing to be heard for miles around. Ended up listening to uh, a station which a preacher was discussing some the finer points of, of doctrine of, of some particular Protestant denomination. I'm not sure which one. Mm-hmm. And he was uh, arguing with what he, he called his hyper-Calvinist friends and their uh, renewed belief in the doctrine of limited atonement, only some are saved. Right. Uh, and it just, I, I was just drawn in. I listened to it half the way home because these are things that I have read about, that I have taught my own students in the American History Survey, uh, some of the doctrinal arguments of the the 17th century, mm-hmm. and they seem to be coming back in modern Protestantism. Uh, well, well, it is, and it certainly uh, defined the wo- world for many, uh, if not most, of the participants in the Civil War. Um, the Civil War, of course, um, on both sides drew Protestants, Catholics, and Jews into the fray, uh, but numerically speaking, uh, it was overwhelmingly an evangelical Protestant uh, affair, and certainly a major strain within that was this hyper Calvinism that you were listening to last night. And it it it, it echoes you know at different levels of the war, uh, right up uh, from Abraham Lincoln down through uh, the individual soldiers. But on the issue of religion in general, one thing that it struck me it struck me as a graduate student and continues to today how little attention has traditionally been paid by academic historians, other than those actually doing religious history, mm-hmm. to the importance of religion in American history. I, uh, in contrast to some of my colleagues, when I teach the, the first half of the survey, the, the colonial experience, it, is, uh, it seems to me religion is the driving force for the vast majority of the, the colonists who come here willingly, at least. Well, I think that that's true. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit surprised to see that it hasn't disappeared in the 21st century. A lot of people saw religion as the driving force in Ohio in the last election. And uh, uh, I think that that says something about the, the, the deep interconnections in America between popular culture, uh, politics, and religion that have never really disappeared. They, have, they wax and they wane. Uh, right now we seem to be in the midst of another... Uh, waxing of uh, interest in religion uh, on both sides of the uh, the divide in American politics, and uh, it's very much a factor today uh, in in a, in a unique way, not exactly like the 17th century, but it's still there. Do, do you see and that? That was why I wanted to approach the war, or the Civil War, with a, the particular um, question of where was religion in this war, and. Um, where was morality, and what was thought um, religiously about the war, what was thought ethically about the war, um, not just by presidents, uh, but by generals, by foot soldiers, by ministers, by women on the home front, uh, that all of these were grist for my mill, in, in, in a sense, uh, even as I also felt that I had to take the reader uh, through the battles, because it's only if you, as you soldier on, battle after battle, that you begin to get a sense of the enormity of, of religion's place and accounting for, well, well and accounting for the bloodbath that became uh, the Civil War. Well, I, I, I was really eager to get this book when I saw the, the title, and uh, I got a, an advance copy to uh, review from a, one of the Civil War magazines. And 
it, it just struck me that this is a, a subject that has been neglected very much in in Civil War writing. That the yes. you're absolutely right. I mean, it's a totally different uh, historical scene from what I encountered when I worked in colonial New England, when when religion was, you know, present in every book. Uh, this book, interestingly enough, began that on the Civil War that I wrote began as a title uh, in search of a book. I was speaking with a colleague and talking about the next major project I wanted to do 12 years ago now. And I said, well, I'm interested in the Civil War. I'm interested in religion, but I don't want to just write about churches uh, and denominations. And he said, well, it sounds to me like you want to write a moral history of the Civil War. And there I had it, a moral history of the Civil War. That was my title. Uh, my next job, I uh, assumed, was to explore all of the literature, periodical literature, magazines, books, to see what had been written on the subject and then see where I could make my contribution. Uh, and that's when I encountered what I've since called the big surprise, because in all of the vast and yawning literature on the Civil War, there's not one comprehensive moral analysis of the war that looks at both sides, uh, that looks at the role of religion, that looks at uh, ethical thinking, during the war. And so I, I found myself in a position where I really had to construct uh, this book from the bottom up. There were no other books that I could play off of. Uh, and it, in many ways, this is a foundational book, I think, with all the great advantages and disadvantages. There's undoubtedly naivete that's crept in that other scholars have already and will continue to identify. Uh, but I think there's also a freshness in it that uh, will hopefully um, kindle further study into the to the unique uh, role that religion played, and sometimes the dark role uh, that it played uh, in that in ways that I think actually uh, exacerbated or intensified the destruction that took place. With two sides coming out of the same Calvinist tradition, absolutely certain that God was orchestrating the affairs. Well, I think. You make a number of points there, and let me touch on a couple of them. Uh, first, I, I, you're absolutely right that this just has not been explored in any meaningful way. Stephen Woodworth has written about the religious outlooks of soldiers mm -hmm. in the last decade, and that book was, was groundbreaking, that no one else had really done that before. And I wonder, right, and James McPherson has a chapter in his book, Why They Fought on Religion. He does. And, and I think those who read the soldiers' letters, uh, when you do that, you can't escape the conclusion that these, these people had a very strong uh, religious framework, a religious worldview that, that, that I would argue most late 20th, early 21st century history professors don't have. Yeah, I and, think that, that that's true. And so um, it's something that it, it doesn't come naturally. Uh, it, does, it doesn't have the drum and bugle uh, type of resonance, I think, with American historians or, or simply people in the general public who, who are interested in, in the Civil War. It's maybe not even a book that they want to read. It can be difficult in points. It can be difficult to see uh, how on both sides clergy who for the longest period set themselves apart from the state as prophets, uh, as men of God calling their society into question, become uh, ardent cheerleaders on both sides of the, the conflict to such a, a degree that all prophetic distance uh, is really swallowed up in a sea of patriotism. And so yeah. when you're telling these soldiers that not only are there real political and, and moral issues in this war, but that God wills it, and that in the end God is going to grant you victory, uh, then you fight until there's, there's no longer any fight left in you. And it, it, it created and accelerated, I think, uh, a lot of the, the mentality that helps to explain just why this Civil War was so devastating uh, and uh, why so many Americans were killing Americans in such staggering numbers. Well, I, th I think th there's... There, uh, let, me, let me phrase this carefully. When I, when I saw the title of the book, The Moral History of the Civil War, I figuratively stood up and cheered. I may have literally stood up and cheered, actually, uh, hmm. because it just something like this needs to be written to, to think about these kinds of issues and also to acknowledge the religious worldview of the, the participants and, and see it through their eyes. 
at the same, as much as I was excited by it, and as much as there are the point you just made about the the momentum given to the struggle by the clergy on both sides, which I think is a, a valuable point, and we'll talk more about it. Uh, as much as I was excited and thrilled by that, I have to admit there were other parts that uh, that, that disappointed me or that I disagreed with. Sure. And you, you mentioned some other scholars that said things. I have consciously not read any reviews of this book before. Oh, it's controversial. Today. Trust me. I, I, I imagine so. Um, I, I I filled it with notations in, in a way I rarely do with with uh, books, and I want to talk about some of those things. Sure. And, and maybe these are, are, are comments you've heard before. Uh, in all probability, they, they will be. But it seemed to me that by far the strength of the book was the analysis of what the clergy were saying north and south, at this point you just made, that that there was a sort of swallowing up in a sea of patriotism the the moral voice uh, from the pulpit that might have caused people to reflect on what was really going on. And and clearly, and you found that, I, I gather, through sermons, through, uh, through uh, publications of the churches, Mm-hmm. Uh, and other sources like that. Now, <coughs> excuse me. On the other hand, one of your 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 main theses is that the, the war, because there was this absence of moral reflection, the war is much worse than it ought to be. It's much bloodier and more terrible than than it should have been. Mm-hmm. And the the overriding question then is what what alternative, how should it have been conducted alternatively, uh, to be more moral? Well, I think one way would have been to simply reflect on the moral issues of the war. Um, I didn't. I, I, I was very deliberate not to talk about uh, 9/11 or Afghanistan or Iraq today. But uh, you know, I'm I'm not hesitant to talk on a radio show about these present events, and one of the things that wherever you are on the issue of the uh, war in Iraq, there's no absence of moral thinking uh, on both sides, you know, either either it's a just war or it's unjust, but these words are becoming part of the common currency of 21st century debate uh, on America and war, and um, in wars with, with casualty levels that are grave sources of concern uh, that are tragic uh, that we're living with day in, day out, but, but they are a drop in the bucket compared to uh, what we faced uh, as a country uh, in the Civil War. And yet no one was raising those questions. No one was saying, you know, how do we map out a just war? I, I don't know how it could have been fought differently, but for starters, you need to be having some segment of pop- your population asking these questions. Is it just? Um, is the conduct... Uh, of our armies in the field, uh, are, are these proportional to the sacrifices that we're asking for? I think uh, no matter who you are today, if 15,000 Marines were to be killed and wounded storming Fallujah, real hard moral questions would be asked. Uh, but what you have in the Civil War is really an avoidance of those questions, and the reason that you can avoid it is that the people on both sides, and here we come back to this Calvinism again, are saying, you know, ultimately, it's not about the North and the South. Ultimately, it's not about Abraham Lincoln and Jefferson Davis. Ultimately, this is about a sovereign God who is orchestrating events so that America can, at the end of the day, when the war is over, however it ends, however many die, uh, assume its p- position, its almost predestined position, to be the world's last best hope, uh, to quote Lincoln. So everybody, including Lincoln, assumed that the war would end at some point, but nobody said how much uh, suffering, how much death should we uh, accept, find acceptable, because we aren't orchestrating it. God is. And, well, and but that's l- that it's a possible then... Predestination. Th- so, so in a sense, it's not that they're not asking moral questions, but the moral questions have been asked and answered. Yeah, the moral questions have been asked and answered in, in such a way that it generates a sort of fatalism. We had uh, 30,000 casualties uh, in these the days of horrific fighting because this is what God willed. And as a matter of fact, that's more or less what Lincoln said in his second inaugural. You know, if God wills that there be a million casualties to court to... Uh, um, 
atone for the, the sin of slavery, then so be it. The judgments of the Lord are good and righteous altogether. And, and it creates kind of a de facto fatalism. <laughs> well, that is, yes, and who are we, he says, to, uh, to doubt that. Yeah. Um, well, this this is uh, just the beginning of, of uh, what I think will be an interesting conversation. Uh, the music tells us we're going to take a short break and come back with Professor Harry S. Stout on Civil War Talk Radio to discuss upon the altar of the nation, of the nation, a moral history of the Civil War. We'll be back in just a moment. 